what you can find is a mystery romance with a supernatural twist that will keep you on the edge of your seat. Now, the title, Tigers Love Bubble Bats and Obsession Perfume, really became a metaphor for starting over. Welcome to the My Future Business Show, where we get you in front of your best audience and keep you there. Not only are we interviewing the biggest names in business to help you become even more successful, we're inviting you to book your spot on the show to help you grow your business. So at the end of the call, make sure you fill in the interview application form at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews. Hi, and welcome back to the My Future Business Show. My name's Rick Nusky, I'm your host. I'm also the luckiest person in the world because I get to speak to not only business authors, I uh, entrepreneurs, and today I'm on the line with a, an award-winning book author. Her name is Mary Kay Savrice. Welcome to the show, Mary. Thank you very much, Rick, for that wonderful introduction. Thank you. Absolutely my pleasure. Now, you and I were just talking about uh, a few things offline and how life is traveling and treating you. I know that you're very busy and I'd love to talk a lot about your work with Big Cats as well as your uh, award-winning authorships. Uh, But what I'd like to do first, if we could, is just for a matter of context, Mary, give some uh, our audience some idea of uh, about you. I'm wondering if we can start with where you live. Where is home for you? Home for me is um, Jupiter, Florida, the United States. Fantastic. Has that always been home? No, it has um, been home for the last three years. Prior to that, I was a resident of the state of Connecticut in the United States. Fantastic. Now, what drew you to uh, your new home? The weather weather. and being becoming an empty nester. It was time to say goodbye to the northeast (laughs) weather and head down (laughs) to the warm. I can I can completely understand that's for sure. And certain I'm looking forward to that day where the empty nesting is happening. How have you found it? Um, You know what? It was a little tough for me at first being a mother, but then I got used to it. So So with that, given that you've got, I I assume, so much more time, what do you like to do nowadays in your downtime? What's your hobby? Um, Well, my hobby had, um, um, once I did become an empty nester, I always had the desire to become a published author. So um, obviously that does not happen overnight. And it did become as a hobby, a hobby very much in the sense that I wrote one manuscript after another, collected the rejection slips one after another. And um, that was my hobby then. And fortunately, several years ago, um, I did get a contract with a traditional publishing house. And um, other than that, I am also um, a Eucharistic minister. But that, honestly, that has been on the sidelines because of COVID. But um, soon that will be picking up again. One thing I've noticed about you already is that that uh, that desire, that definiteness of purpose, and that persistence to you know make sure that you keep going until you got that contract. What was it like when you when you succeeded in that regard? Well, it was. I mean, to explain it, I had finally said, God. I've reached the point in my life, how old am I going to be before this actually happens? And believe it or not, um, the evening before a big birthday, um, I did get my contract, my first contract. So he heard me, he yes, answered. <laughs> absolutely, you send it out to the universe, it's gonna come back in, in, with, uh, in spades, isn't it? Now, um, has writing always been a natural thing for you or is it a skill that you had to, to learn, Mary? No, it was not. In college, I was in the um, C- minus for writing um, class. <laughs> And it really became something down the road where I finally learned just write as you speak. Think of it as a movie and imagine it from there. And um, it's a craft. And it's, um, I mean, some people, don't get me wrong, some people may be very, very gifted. Yeah. 
but um, it's you have to hone your craft, I believe, as anything else. I love that story because we have a lot of uh, aspiring book authors and entrepreneurs and the likes who listen uh, to the show, Mary, and they take a lot away from that because it is uh, it does take a, a, a certain type of individual to one think about writing a book, but actually seeing it through. Um, what was that? What was that moment like? You know, when you you finished that last piece of writing in your first book and then it was published what was that like oh it was it was just incredible and at that point you are you're sitting on top of the world and then reality hits you're published you have to market you have to sell your book and you're knocked in the side of the head and you're like why <laughs> am i doing this but, um, you know, as you said, with your audience, you have inspiring authors. And if there's one thing I can say to anybody, it is never, ever to give up. It took me a good 10 years. And um, in the present, not only do you have to try to aim to be traditionally published, there's the opportunities to self-publish. And that has come such a long way in the last 10 years. So um, if, if it's it's in your heart what I say is go for it you talk about traditional um, um, authorship uh, are you interested in audio format um, I am I am but um, at this point um, I have not been approached mm -hmm. as yet but absolutely um, I am most definitely interested now I know that you have a love for big cats and yes. I'd love to talk about that at some length. And I'd like to go back some years when you were a child. Do you remember um, something about growing up uh, related to pets that uh, is a fond memory for you? Oh, absolutely. Cats. cats I grew I, up I knew with it. many cats. <laughs> Absolutely love cats. Developed a cat allergy. Oh, and, oh that's not um, good. No, that was not good. And also my youngest daughter developed a cat allergy, so we were not able to have cats. But I am an absolute cat lover, it's regular cats and big cats. Now, when you were growing up, um, you know, we talk about um, being inspired by people. We've talked about book authors. Who inspired you as you were growing up? Um, I would say the biggest inspiration always came to me when I found myself just in that moment of reading that book. Then that author became my favorite author. And um, one thing that you do find as you read, um, as an author, I analyzed everything. Why? did they say this? Why did they say that? Mm -hmm. Why did it take them 30 pages to say something <laughs> that would only take five lines? Yes. So um, it, it, it's, I mean, every author, yeah. I would say. Did you have a particular book like, uh, you know, The Hobbit or anything like that st that stood out for you early on? Um, well, you know what? As the kids were growing up, of course, it was the whole Harry Potter series. Of course. And then it was the Sakaar series. There were just so many other books that I would read to my children. And, 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 and as you know, once you have children, do you have time for reading? Mm. No. You know, it's a magazine here or there. So Yeah, that's, um, that's the reason I touched on the audio book thing, because they're quite useful in that regard, aren't they? Yes, absolutely. When I was driving my kids off to college, I would be listening to those audio books. Now, I know that uh, you are an active author. You're still writing right now. I'd love to set the scene for aspiring authors who are listening to this because it will be helpful for them to, to know your daily routine. How do you prepare yourself um, for, a, I guess, a lengthy stint with the pen, if you use a pen? <laughs> Um, yes, I, well, I use the laptop. Yeah. Um, I began using the pen and then I realized once I did start putting my first manuscript on the laptop, it was so incredibly easier for me yes. to work with the laptop. 
but how did uh, my day begin? Mm. I like to think in terms of every day to write. I would love to begin writing early in the morning after exercising a bit, and in the afternoon I pursue my marketing. Yeah, fantastic. I, I wonder also, it's very important that um, we think about our mindset. What do you do in the, those days where you oh, I can't really get into it? What do you do to, to kick yourself in the backside to, to get into that frame of mind where you can create some wonderful content? Well, when you work with an editor, I'd, I'm currently working on um, a trilogy. So the first book of the trilogy will be published this summer. And so that is a routine where you need to work with the editor. I need to move forward with the second book in the trilogy and think about the third book. So just knowing, um, having that in the back of my mind that these three books will be due at some point. Yes. Um, yeah. Believe me, and yeah. you have a contract yeah. that pushes you. I bet it does. Yeah. Is there any time uh, away at all? Because you know, mental health is clearly important. Do you need downtime oh. at all? Oh, absolutely. I do have downtime. And the other thing that I downtimes for me I can actually be writing. Oh. Not the you know the marketing part. I wouldn't say I consider downtime, mm -hmm. but um, but you know you. The, the social media and everything like that. But when you come up with an idea and you just want, and it, it flows, that to me becomes downtime. But I definitely do have downtime. I love to watch um, political thriller movies, yep. mysteries. So that's a good downtime and traveling visiting with the kids, those are all wonderful downtimes. I think about this, uh, when, when I talk to book authors, I, I always think about their sources of inspiration. You've touched on movies, you've touched on other books. What about your environment? Do you get inspiration from things around you? Absolutely. My biggest inspiration is um, I begin, something inspires me for a title. Yeah. And um, that's my, every single manuscript I begin with a quirky title and I develop the story about with that and I was very very much inspired um, in visiting a big cat reserve in St. Augustine, Florida several years ago and that gave me the inspiration for the first novel that was traditionally published, Tiger's Love, Bubble Bats and Obsession <laughs> Perfume. Who knew? What a great and that's title. a mystery. <laughs> that's a mystery romance. <laughs> yeah, look, um, uh, it's an incredible title. It caught me. I did a double take as soon as I read it. An <laughs> Obsession Perfume? That's the bit that really got me. Tell us about the book. Tell us about the I guess the structure of the book and what people can expect to find in this wonderful work. Well, um, what you can find is a um, mystery romance with a supernatural twist that will keep you on the edge of your seat. Now, the title, Tigers Love Bubble Bats and Obsession Perfume, really became a metaphor for me for starting over because these beautiful cats, these creatures, are um, leftovers from circuses, movies, even people that um, own them and think they can make wonderful pets. Mm. They are brought to this sanctuary. Mm -hmm. And that's what inspired me so much watching this incredible 600 pound Siberian tiger slip into a bubble bath. He looked as though he was taking off a robe and <laughs> lapped up the <laughs> bubbles. So this actually happened. This is absolutely true. Wow. This is where your audience, um, you can even go on the internet and you will find tigers are the only big cats that can sit in water all day. And bubbles, they adore bubbles. <laughs> and besides bubbles, obsession perfume there are pheromones in this perfume oh. that calm them and soothe them because you know i went to a place called monato zoo it's out in the outback here and it has uh, giraffes elephants tigers lions the lot you've got your rhinos the lot and i remember you can actually go in a caged vehicle and they sit on your your vehicle and you can hear them 
just yeah. breathing. They're just intimidating creatures, aren't they? They are to- so beautiful. Oh, Listen, they're gorgeous. I, I don't think I would, uh, I mean, the closest that I did get to the tiger and bubbles was probably four feet. And there was a wire cage in front of us. And of course, the tiger was in this big 16 foot um, by five foot high um, um, galvanized tank in, in these bubbles. Yeah, wow. Well. So, but when, when you see them in bubbles, you think, oh, my goodness. Doesn't make any hey, sense. Let me, <laughs> let me get in there with you. <laughs> well, I look back now that you're saying this, and my wife and I, on our honeymoon, we went to Mauritius. There is a, a park there where you can actually walk with the tigers. And my wife, in one photo, is the look of terror on her face. There is an <laughs> uncaged tiger in the tree directly behind us, not not half a metre away. And there's this guy just off camera with a stick. <laughs> I'm thinking, wow. Retrospectively, I don't think I would have done that if, I, <laughs> if I'd know what I know now. <laughs> exactly. That would scare the heck out of me as well. No, look, uh, you did, how long did this book take for you to write from its inception through to public, uh, publication then? Well, the, um, the manuscript usually takes me about a year to produce. And from that point, I started to submit to um, publishers. And that took about six months. And once we signed the contract, it took another year for the book to be published. So it, it truly is a, um, a procedure that requires quite a bit of patience. Absolutely, certainly a skill to learn. Now, I know that this is no ordinary book, Mary. You have some uh, pretty uh, amazing awards that go along with it. Could you talk to us about that and how they came about? Oh, absolutely, I would love to. Um, Yes, uh, the book was published in 2019, and in that year, the um, Tigers Love Bubble Bats and Obsession Perfume, Perfume Who Knew won an award from International Royal um, Dragonfly, and that was for a new author and for mystery. The um, following year, I won... Um, um, an award for American um, Book Fest. And um, this year, recently, in the last month, um, Tigers Love Bubble Bats has won four awards. And um, I am so very, very proud of these awards. Um, not only one is for the um, grand list. I made the short list of the um, grand prize. Mm-hmm. It, I was also awarded for first-time author, and um, I, my publishing house was awarded as a publisher. And, That's um, incredible. And, and then just two weeks ago, I received um, also an award as a finalist in the fiction category for mystery. Uh, it, it, it wouldn't surprise me if, if when you started out on this journey, Mary, that you had no uh, intention or inclination to go for awards. How shocked were you when they came through? Well, I think it's, um, as an author, your publisher does want you to submit. Yeah. And always in the back of your mind, you're like, okay, you know, do I've done do the best I can. <laughs> Whatever happens, happens. So it is. It's a thrill and an honor um, to receive an award because you're competing with many, many incredible authors. Absolutely. And um, to receive that award, it's recognition, not only for me, it's recognition for my publishing house and it's recognition for my editor. Yeah, absolutely. Um, congratulations to everybody involved Thank here. You. It's, a, it's a wonderful um, thing that you have all achieved. Now, in terms of your speaking engagement, we know that the world's been turned upside down the last couple of years. Yes. What what has happened in this regard, and and, and are the uh, I guess the uh, the doors starting to open up again? Um, I did. Um, yes, as you said, everything shut down with COVID. Where I would, me- I'm also a speaker. I would mm-hmm. meet with book groups. I would meet with people in libraries, um, various associations. Everything shut down. So um, when that did become possible, it was usually during the same <laughs> um, stint we're doing now, Zoom yep. or Skype. 
but things are starting to open up. And this past um, fall, I signed with a new. So um, as you say, these awards, yes, they, they do look very good as you're approaching um, possibly a new publishing house, which is what I did. I approached them with the trilogy. So um, they looked at my previous work and they were interested. Yeah, that's wonderful. Just to uh, look at all of the work that you've done. If you're on this call and you're an aspiring author, there's lots to take away here. And I'll be making sure that you can get uh, to Mary and her wonderful books. Now, speaking about books, you have also something else in the war uh, in the works. I was wondering if you could share that with us. Yes, I would love to. Um, this summer, the first of my trilogy, which is a fantasy adventure crossover. Um, and I'll explain what that is in a second, will be published. And as I said, I love to work with quirky titles. The title of the first trilogy, the first book in the trilogy, is The Girl in the Toile Wallpaper. Now, you're probably going to ask many questions. <laughs> I couldn't even pronounce it, to be honest. I thought it was misspelled. <laughs> <laughs> it's not toilet wallpaper, no. it's toile wallpaper. <laughs> and I'm sure many in your audience audience know what toile is. Yes, I researched. Toile, yes, toile is that incredible artistic fabric and wall covering. It's, it, um, you know, it shares uh, life with you. It's like, take a look at me. There's something going on. It's, it, it can be um, so vibrant. It's usually two different shades and I find it so incredible. As I do the Tigers, I wrote my novel around it. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you have any uh, friends, colleagues, uh, professionals, as associates that you give your drafts to, to, to have a quick read? Um, no. To be no. honest with you, I do not. I um, no, I, I send my work in and mm -hmm. then I you do get, um, once you start working with your editor, yep. that is a learning experience in <laughs> itself. It's wonderful and um, it's punishing and it really, it really makes you humble. I wonder in terms of your marketing uh, experience, um, what is it like to have marketed uh, your first book? I'm wondering if we can teach um, the audience something about how to uh, do book marketing. Um, as your audience well, um, you know, knows well, everything nowadays has to do with social media. So um, not only do, does the author need to be out there physically, you also need to pursue different social media avenues and build a following in that regard. And that does take time. You know, it's very rewarding, but um, you've got to put the time into it. Yeah, absolutely. And I noticed, um, for example, uh, for the upcoming call today, you had done some promotional work. E it seems to me that each and every opportunity that you have, you must take advantage of that. Would that be fair? Absolutely. Absolutely. And it, it, it's all enjoyable. So which, which platforms do you think that authors should be found on predominantly? Well, it, it, good question, Rick. It depends on your genre. Yeah. Um, so, um, I mean, if you are writing for an older audience, Facebook is wonderful. If you're writing for a younger audience, Instagram, TikTok, um, you mm -hmm. know, LinkedIn tends to be a little bit more businessy. But again, it depends on the genre that you write in. Thank you very much for sharing. This has um, been just such a wonderful call. I, I wonder if we can... Um, talk about your involvement at uh, the local cat shelter in Jupiter, Florida that's coming up. Oh, absolutely. I am so thrilled that um, this summer with the launching of the Girl in the Toile wallpaper, I will be partnering up with a local cat shelter, um, the Cat Foundation. And what they will be doing is naming incoming kittens after characters in my book. Oh, wow. So, oh, it, it's, it's so exciting. And we're going to <clears throat> give away books and we're going to have other freebies. You know, I'm going to be, we'll be approaching now in that sense, I will be approaching the local media and 
and um, the the TV, uh, the radio, the newspapers, because I think it's such a wonderful <clears throat> effort to have people come out and adopt, you know, cats. I think it's going to be an overwhelming success, that's for sure and certain. Now, given your advocacy work and your love for cats, as there are many others that are listening to the show today, Mary, what can people do to contribute to their protection? Um, I would say, you know, start looking it, it, to, to their protection. You can um, look into associations, tiger associations. Mm -hmm. The um, the the wildlife reserve that inspired me is in Augustine, Florida. And um, again, people can visit there, people can contribute. But I think you can just check where you live. You will find some wonderful associations that can help you out with that. And, and I'll be making sure that uh, you find the links no matter where you find this call. You'll definitely find some links back to Mary and, and, uh, and move on from there to find those associations. Now, I know that you have a large presence online, Mary. Um, tell us a little bit about uh, the work that you're doing on your website and what people can find there. Yes, um, I would love for your audience to visit my author website, which is um, www.marykaveres, S-A-V-A-R-E-S-E. And from there, it's probably the simplest way to lead you to Amazon, to Barnes & Nobles, to any independent bookstore, as well as to social media that I do participate in. So can people actually buy your book electronically or is it hardbound? Oh, bound? yes. Yes. Nope. It is. They can buy my book. It comes in e-form, hardcover, soft cover. And I also, um, I'm so thrilled to promote because of the capabilities of Zoom and Skype. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, if there are any book groups out there and they do read my book and they want me to participate, I am there. We'll Absolutely. do giveaways, we'll do some Prosecco time. I mean, it's it's a fun time to meet with um, readers and their book groups. And I'm so happy to answer any questions as an you, author. You have some wonderful energy about you and I'm sure people will be jumping over themselves to invite you to their groups. Now, uh, I, I've looked through your blog. I was wondering if you can talk about some of the types of content that people will find uh, on your blog. On my blog, I do talk about, um, like, never giving up, you know. Um, if you do have a passion for something, and you know if you have that passion because you can't wait to get to it to do it. So I, I am a big, um, you, you know, I really just want your audience to believe in themselves and never give up because it took me 10 years before my first book was traditionally published and what kept me going was the passion of just writing. Yeah, that's wonderful um, insight. Thank you for sharing. Now, um, if you're on the, today's call and you're looking for um, a book like this and you're looking to learn from somebody who's walked the path before you mary certainly is that individual that you need to reach out to have a look at her books and mary on that when is your latest book due for release um sometime this summer we're looking at july or august and again depends on what's happening with covid and production and but we're aiming for this summer Thank you very much. Now, um, if you're a, a My Future Business audience uh, member and you want to be updated, what I will do when that book is released, I will update the post and I'll send out a new email advising you that the book is uh, now available for purchase on all of the outlet, outlets that we've spoken about. Um, Mary, I've had just such a great time spending some time with you on the My Future Business show today. Thank you so much, Rick. This has just been absolutely wonderful. Thanks for joining us today. If you enjoyed the call, then make sure to subscribe, leave a comment, share us with your friends and book your spot on the show at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews. And if you're looking for solutions that will help grow your business, then visit myfuturebusiness.com forward slash shop.